Some tennis players just seem to have a knack for turning crowds against him. Daniil Medvedev, for example, is a spiky character who is always looking for an argument. Nick Kyrgios has a type of attitude that makes fans either love him or hate him. None of these players, however, can hold a candle to the player who could genuinely start a fight in an empty room. Daniel Kohler, or Crazy Danny as he was known. Crazy Danny was once choked by another player, accused of racism, and eventually banned from professional tennis. So how did Crazy Danny upset so many people? To understand Daniel Kohler as much as anyone can, it helps to know a bit more about his background. He was born in Austria, and by the age of three he was enjoying himself at his parents' tennis club. At age six, he had his first formal lesson, and before long, the coaches marked him out as a talented and encouraged him to play more. His parents agreed to back him, and from then on, they gave him all the money they could manage. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Color were not rich, so Daniel started to need sponsors as he got better and needed to travel more. Instead of one big sponsor, he had lots of small ones, and if he kept working hard, they would pay for most of his travel. The process of Daniel becoming Crazy Danny then started taking place. First, he said he always had so much energy, which was totally confusing himself. He was already under pressure to succeed as lots of ordinary people were sponsoring him and pinning their hopes on him. To this combustible mixture was added the advice of a coach who taught him to be aggressive and to get in his opponent's face. So you had a kid who was desperate to win, full of energy and being taught to be feisty and aggressive on court. How do you think that was likely to work out? At first, everything was good. Daniel was given a wild card into a futures event in Austria when he was 16 years old and won two matches to get his first world ranking points. By the end of 2002, he was ranked 640 in the world. While he was winning ranking points, he was not winning friends with his intense behavior. A few years later, while he was playing on the South American Challenger circuit, his fellow players started a petition to get him banned. According to Crazy Danny, 75 out of 80 players in the tournament signed the petition, which showed how disliked Crazy Danny was in the circuit. He ended up getting banned for six months by the ATP in 2006. If Vladimir Putin rocked up to play in South America next week, he would be more welcome than Kohler was, so why did everyone hate Crazy Danny so much? First, he was always mocking opponents with words and gestures. He would throw and smash rackets and argue with the crowds. Daniel has admitted that he found it difficult to handle bad line calls, so you can imagine how he spoke to officials. Kohler thinks that the worst thing he did was verbally abuse a ball boy as he was only a child. He admits now that he was an asshole to do that. But this was just the tip of the iceberg. The real highs and lows for Kohler came in 2009 and 2010. In 2009, he played the best tennis of his career. He seemed to be getting his passion and perfectionism under control, working with his new coach and a psychologist. At the US Open, he played some great tennis, reaching the third round where he gave eventual champion Del Potro a tough time with some great shot making and determination. He would soon achieve a career high ranking of 55. At last, it seemed, Crazy Danny had got things under control. But as it turns out, that stability was just an illusion. In April of 2009, Daniel's mother died of cancer, and although this was followed by the best spell of his career, he was emotionally troubled. And when things started to go wrong, his life just spiraled out of control. He began to be involved in increasingly bizarre incidents, and the ATP seemed to have decided that it was time to be rid of him. By mid-2010, Kohler was under investigation for betting-related offenses, and his psychologist was concerned about him, suggesting that he was depressed and close to burnout. The betting offenses were minor, like placing links on his website, which allowed people to place bets on matches, but they were enough to give the ATP a reason to discipline him. Then, during a tournament in Austria, he and the equally volatile Stefan Kubak almost came to blows. Kubak thought Kohler had insulted him during a match, which Daniel denied. Not satisfied? Kubek went on to grab Kohler by the throat and choke him. Kubek was then disqualified from the match. In 2010, Daniel had a bad loss at the French Open and told Austrian fans, you just can't imagine how much pain I'm in. At that point, he was clearly in trouble mentally, and a few weeks later, he was accused of making racist remarks in German to Brazilian Julio Silva in a challenger in Italy. According to Silva, this was the second match between them in which Kohler made racist remarks, and this time, he went on to file a police report against Crazy Danny. This was just another step closer to meltdown. Crazy Danny later admitted that by this stage, he had no motivation to play tennis, or indeed to do anything, a classic symptom of depression. To the ATP, color must have been becoming more and more of an embarrassment. Perhaps if this was today, they might have looked to help him to get more support for his obvious mental health issues, but instead, a different option presented itself. 
Color claimed to have received phone calls offering him huge cash payments, totaling almost 200,000 euros to lose in the French Open in Kitzbühel. The ATP's Tennis Integrity Unit thought these amounts sounded surprisingly high and investigated them more in depth. At around this time, a South African player called Wayne Odesnik had been found guilty of importing human growth hormone into Australia and he was banned from tennis for two years. This ban was then reduced to seven months after he provided substantial assistance in relation to the enforcement of professional rules of conduct. According to an Austrian newspaper, this meant testifying that Kohler had called him to convince him to fix a match. We can't know what was said about Kohler and by whom, but he clearly believes that Odesnik, who was later effectively banned for life for further offenses, was a key part of it. Daniel says that the guy who testified against him had never met him, yet was somehow certain he heard Kohler's voice on the phone asking him to fix a match. The TIU has never publicly stated which matches Daniel is supposed to have tried to fix, who his accuser is, or what they said. They felt that a life ban and a $100,000 fine were justified, and with that, Crazy Danny entered the tennis history books as the first player ever to receive a life ban for attempting to fix matches. Kohler then appealed to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, but in 2012 they upheld the ban, although they resigned the fine as he was never accused of benefiting financially. Since his glory days on the tour, Kohler has kept himself entertained by appearing on Big Brother VIP and dating show Adam Sucht Eva. He is a proud father and seems much more settled as he reminisces about the crazy times. But as he admitted in 2019, he would jump at the chance to play tennis again if he was allowed to. We can look at the story of Daniel Kohler in two ways. He's probably the worst behaved and most widely disliked player ever to play professional tennis, and we can laugh at his crazy antics. Looking back from the lofty vantage point of 2022, however, we can draw parallels with other sportsmen like Tyson Fury, who has also had serious mental health issues. A few years ago, Fury was kind of a joke due to his odd behavior and wild ramblings, but now, having got help for his mental health problems, he's seen as a role model and an all-time great. If Daniel Collar had played a decade later, Perhaps, things would have turned out very differently for him. If you have enjoyed this type of content and would like to see more like this, make sure to like the video and subscribe to MyTennisHQ TV.